Armin and Levac, 104.5 The Team, 104.5theteam.com. And Levac and I, earlier in the show, were having the uh, debate over what Tony Romo said in regards to Jason Witten. He said, quote, Jason Witten might be the best Dallas Cowboy of all time. And I named some, and then... Levac, as I do sometimes on the show, I name drop. That happens every now and yeah, then, right? Watch your toes when you're around Arvin Williams. I said, well, let's just call up, uh, you know, one of the best Dallas Cowboys tight ends of all time, and Jay Novacek, and let's ask him that question. Jay Novacek, a friend of mine, now joining us on 104.5 The Team. Jay, first of all, how's the ranch going, man? How this is hunting season for you, isn't it? It's uh, just around the corner. Um, actually, archery season started the uh, first of October, and, and rifle season is coming up. Uh, the first weekend of November. So do you practice? I mean, you obviously, you know, the way you're wired for football and you know, all the time, you, you know, you still work out and all that good stuff. Do you practice for hunting? Oh, yeah. I mean, mentally you do. Um, you know, there's a lot of times you have to, um, you know, when you're sitting in the stand, if there's a lot of does around and you have to be quiet and, you know, a lot of times it's uh, you don't move for hours on hours uh, just so in case a big buck steps out, you know, everyone gets spooked. I would have a really big problem with that, with not moving. Yeah, he can't sit still for five seconds. <laughs> I went uh, deer hunting one time with my brother. It was the most boring damn thing in my entire life. <laughs> you know, that's just great, though, those, those times that it is boring as far as nothing out and moving around. Uh, you just, you're there by yourself. No one else is there. You can think, and, you know, you have to be mentally strong, so obviously you're not that. <laughs> I like nice. Jay so much. This is great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad we had Jay on uh, today. Jay Novacek, <laughs> former Dallas Cowboy tied in to 104.5 The Team. All right, Jay, when you hear Tony Romo say that uh, Jason Witten is in the discussion of the best Dallas Cowboy all time, I thought of six guys before him. What, what was your thought when you heard Tony Romo say that? Well, actually, it's the first time I've heard that. And um, but I think that if you you really think about it, you know, there's in, in all teams, not just not just the Cowboys, but in all teams, there are so many great, great players. Um, and I, I love it that that Tony said that because Jason is an unbelievable player. He's an unbelievable individual. Uh, his work work ethic is is as good as anybody that's ever played the game. And and you know, see, you you put all those things together, and and he's right, definitely right up there in the top. And and that's what you have to have. You have to have a you know, players that you play with that think you are the best, and you know that that just gives everybody more confidence. That, that that's it, that's how tight a group of, of team that they have, and I think it's shown this year. I guess I guess my problem with it is you know being up here in New York, it's almost like saying somebody's one of the greatest Yankees of all time. The Dallas Cowboys, you guys have such a story history, so many great players, and again, being in the New York area, I hate saying that, but it's so true. It's hard to – I almost wish he had just said, hey, he's one of my favorite Cowboys of all time. Like, when you think of the team you were on, how is it – I mean, you've got to have a list of guys that you would put ahead of him, though. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you do. You know, I, I think Troy Aikman is, as far as um, a quarterback, is the best passing quarterback that's ever played the game. Um, he, the way he can deliver a ball, the way he – uh, read the defense the way he was able to, you know, put touch on it or or zip it in there and, and give it to it, to you is, is just to get it into a tight spot. I think he was just as far as a true passer, the best that's ever played the game. And so I <laughs> that makes me think that Troy's the best player that the Cowboys have ever had. If, and if you ask guys who played on the team with Roger Staubach, they'd probably have similar things to say about Roger, right? Absolutely, you know, and that's their, which is great. That's why it's it's neat to be able to hear, you know, Tony say that, just because you know he feels that strong of how uh, how good of a player Jason is, and you know the way I would feel about my teammates, the way other players would feel about Roger and, and their other teammates. Um, <laughs> you know, and you sit there and you look at it, Bob Lilly. You know what a great great individual and the way he played the game and. He just goes on, Randy White. He just goes on and on down the line. Uh, of course, he, I just threw those defensive players in just to give them a bone. Of course, obviously, <laughs> the offensive players are the ones that uh, are the best. Um, what do you think of that one, Armin? <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a good response, Jay. That was nice. <laughs> Uh, you know, Good callback. This is cool. I mean, uh, you know, for me, I, I watched you play in so many big games. Jay Novacek, as, as you look at we have Derek Brown on the show a lot. He's a former Giant tight end. 
He said a million times, he wishes he was a couple years later, born a couple years later, because the tight end role has changed so much. How how much, when you look at a guy like Jay Witten, do you sit there and go, man, if I could have, uh, if I could be there now, I could catch just as many passes as him. Do you ever think like that? Oh, you know, there are times. The, the, the thing that it, I watch more than anything is just the way um, they're able to release off the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, shoot, when I first came in the league, it was do not let the tight end off the line of scrimmage. And that means that the guy over it beats you up, uh, the next phase beats you up, and if there's a third phase, if you happen to get that far, they're going to beat you up. And so that was, it's a totally different mindset now than it was back then. Uh, you cleared that line of scrimmage, and half the battle was won. And we had, the, you know, just the way the running game that we had, we knew Emmett was going to get a bunch of balls. We were going to run the ball with that offensive line. We are going to throw the ball half the time. Uh, Michael's going to catch the majority of them, and which he should. And the way it has opened up even more nowadays, it would have been interesting. I, I would have fit this type of system better than I did uh, our system that we had. Yeah, because you were that catching that catching tight end. Do you ever wonder why they don't bring up guys to st- try to stop a Jimmy Graham per se? Is it because you can't? I mean, why why don't they try to jam him at the line as much or do they? Yeah, you know, I think you know, as much as they split them out nowadays and move them around, and we did a lot of that too, which which I love to do, which really helped me out. Uh, but the way they split them, move them around, and put them in different positions and uh, uptight and out wide, you really can't. Say, okay, a, this guy's going to always going to be uh, holding the tight end up because you really can't do that defensively now the way he uh, plays the game. Jay Novacek, three time Super Bowl champion, uh, former Dallas Cowboys tight end, joining us on 104 5, the team with Armin and Levac. Uh, all right, Jay, you, you still you stay very involved with the Cowboys organization. You have season tickets, you're at all the home games, uh, you travel to some away games as well. What do you think of this team so far this season? Are they, are they, because because you, just like me, uh, we know how the Cowboys have been lately in the month of December. Do you forecast that again, or is this team different this year? Well, you, you were, we hope that they are different. Uh, first of all, I, they have uh, surprised me. I thought they were going to be better at the end of the season at the be- than at the beginning of the season. But I think, you know, I've seen teams that lose a player, say, uh, um, well, when the Eagles were playing with, who was it, uh, their quarterback, McNair? Uh, Donovan? Yeah. McNabb. McNabb, McNabb yeah. And, yeah, sorry. And, you know, when he went out one time, uh, the kid from BYU comes in, and they played well as a team. And I think that this year is kind of like that with the Cowboys, where they weren't really knowing what Tony was going to be able to do. And I think he's, he is struggling in certain aspects of his game. Um, but they're like, you know, we all need to just play good as a team, trust the guy next to you, help the guy next to you if you can, and when we do that, then and cut down mistakes. And when we do that, we find ourselves in position to be successful. And that's all it takes. They aren't playing great by any means, but they're playing well as a team. Are they playing good enough to go into Seattle and beat the Seahawks? That's going to be a tough one. <laughs> and, and, and you know, and, and you can say that with every team in the NFL too. So, yeah, are they playing good enough? Yeah. I mean, you can beat anybody. We, I've been in games where we should be just blowing somebody out and we get beat by them. And so things just happen. I think the play calling's been better. I think the coaches have done a better job this year. So you put all that together, and you never know what a team like this can do. You know, we, we saw those teams like the Giants a few years ago that barely squeak into the playoffs and end up winning the Super Bowl. As long as, as, long as they keep that perspective of, you know, we're not great, so we're going to have to do something extraordinary each individual in each game in order for us to stay on this winning streak. Jay Novacek, former Cowboys tight end on 104.5, the team with Armin in the back. Hey, Jay, you're a mentor of Des Bryant's. You you stay pretty close to him. Up here in New York, of course, Giants country, Jets, Bills, he has this, you know, you bring up Des Bryant, and the first thing people bring up is, oh, off the field, oh, he's such a mess, he's not the sharpest guy. Does he get a bad rep for his for what's happened off the field? Because, I mean, the catch that he made last week 
is is so phenomenal, and sometimes I wonder if we give him the full respect to how good this guy is and how good he can be. You know, obviously, Dez is, Dez is extremely talented, and the things that that I always try to, to convey to him is the heart that he has to play the game of football. That if you put that heart into being successful in football, uh, into being successful in life, you know how great of an individual and how great of a player and what people will think of you like that. You know, he's a very intelligent. We all have our intelligence in some areas and not in others, and. You know he he's an intelligent individual. He's he has unbelievable work ethic. Um, once once he captures all this, and you can see the stages of his life through the through just the NFL and how he has developed into a man that cares about what he does, both on and off the field. And he's been so much better. Jay, I got to ask you one question. Now we've been sitting here since Armin got into town and. And we've often wondered why doesn't he sound like you? You sound like a man from the Texas or uh, Dallas. <laughs> like you that? sound like a cowboy. Armin sounds like he has no accent whatsoever to us. What? How come he got? He has no like. Was he really ever down there? What? Well, just. I mean, I don't know of only one person that's lived in Texas with the name Armin. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, that right there, that, that it's a downfall. Yeah. So you're saying that no one wanted to associate with him down there, and that's why he has no accent. <laughs> <laughs> but Williams, though. Uh, you know, I tell you what, our our family misses him being down oh. here. He was sure good to our son, Blake, and he was, he was having a, a very, he started a very good radio uh, career going on, and Armin was one of those guys that, that stepped up and, started him on a right path. Well, in the back, I was going to say that, too, that Blake Novacek is going to be somebody in the radio industry. So everybody, he's young right now. How old is Blake now, 16? 17. 17. 17. He's young right now, but remember that name because he's going to be something in this industry. He's a a really good talent. If I could steal him and bring him up here right now, I would. Actually, Jay, uh, Armin said that to me yesterday, that if he could steal steal your son and bring him on, on board... He would do so. In a heartbeat. In an absolute heartbeat. Jay, you guys are greatness, man. Tell Amy hi, hi for me. And uh, I'm coming back to Dallas in March. I'll have to stop by the ranch and say hi to you guys. I'll make sure we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you to man him up, but that's a better answer. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Appreciate it. All right, Jay. See you.